for organic compounds that contain carbon heteroatom multiple bonds in which the heteroatom is more electronegative than carbon, reducing agents amount to sources of nucleophilic hydrogen or hydride, H minus. And they may include H minus directly as a salt, something like sodium hydride or potassium hydride. These are commonly used as reducing agents. Or they may contain hydrogen in a more complex structure in which, because of the electronegativity of what the hydrogen is connected to, it's still very nucleophilic. And that's the case in one of the strongest reducing agents that we use in organic chemistry, lithium aluminum hydride. I'll abbreviate that as LiAlH4. That's its molecular formula, or LaH. This is an extremely reactive source of hydride, or H-. And additions or substitutions of the hydride anion from LaH amount to reductions. To help us understand how lithium aluminum hydride works, let's take a look at its structure. It's really a salt of the lithium cation and the aluminum hydride anion, AlH4-. And to help us understand why this is a source of nucleophilic hydride, let's consider the relative electronegativities of aluminum and hydrogen. If we look at the periodic table or look up the electronegativity values, what we find is that hydrogen is more electronegative than aluminum. This means that the aluminum-hydrogen bond is polarized, in fact, very strongly toward hydrogen. So we can draw a resonance structure in which hydrogen has a negative charge and the aluminum atom is now neutral. Notice that in the starting structure, because the aluminum has four single bonds and neutral aluminum bears three valence electrons, the aluminum is negatively charged. But really, a very important resonance form and one that highlights the reactivity of aluminum hydride is this one in which the negative charge is residing on the hydrogen atom rather than aluminum. And additions or substitutions, nucleophilic additions or nucleophilic substitutions by this hydride anion are the basis of the reducing ability of lithium aluminum hydride and other related hydrides. Let's look now at the reactions of lithium aluminum hydride with ketones and aldehydes. When a ketone is treated with lithium aluminum hydride, the product that we get is an alcohol, specifically a secondary alcohol since we started with a ketone bearing two R groups. What has happened here is the addition of hydrogen to the carbonyl carbon, and the hydrogen that bonds to the carbonyl carbon comes from the nucleophilic hydride within lithium aluminum hydride. At the same time, a hydrogen atom has bonded to the carbonyl oxygen, and this comes from acidic workup. And this is an important point. The two hydrogens in the resulting alcohol come from different sources. The nucleophilic hydrogen, comes from the reducing agent, lithium aluminum hydride. The electrophilic hydrogen comes from a proton transfer step. We'll look at the mechanism in detail, but it's important to note this because you'll see these reactions written with the reducing agent first, followed by acidic workup. And even when you see acidic workup left out, it's still a good idea to go ahead and protonate what would be a negatively charged oxygen right here. Aldehydes react similarly. The nucleophilic hydride in lithium aluminum hydride adds to the carbonyl carbon. We already had a hydrogen built into the starting material. And this is an important difference from the ketone case. In an aldehyde, we already have a hydrogen linked to the carbonyl carbon, and that remains in the product. As a consequence, the product we get is a primary rather than a secondary alcohol when aldehydes are reduced with LAH. Just as in the example above, treatment with acid, aqueous acid during workup, protonates the oxygen and puts an electrophilic hydrogen atom at the oxygen of the carbonyl group. Now let's take a look at the mechanism of this process. And I'll use a ketone just for the purposes of illustration and to make a point here shortly. But of course the mechanism for aldehydes is going to be extremely analogous. The electron flow really is exactly the same. The mechanism involves nucleophilic addition of the hydride built into lithium aluminum hydride. We could draw this a few different ways, but if we start from the more traditional resonance form with the aluminum atom obeying the octet rule, from the carbonyl's perspective, this looks like a nucleophilic addition of H minus. Notice that both electrons in the ALH bond are headed toward the carbonyl carbon to the polarized carbon oxygen pi bond. So it's an AD sub N elementary step, ADN of hydride to the carbonyl carbon within the CO pi bond. If we look now at the structure of the product, what we've created is an alkoxide anion, an intermediate with a negative charge on oxygen, and a new bond has been established to hydrogen. 
And the point I want to make now, and the reason I chose a ketone for this, is that this reaction, as it's drawn right here, this example, establishes a new tetrahedral stereocenter right here. Notice that this carbon has gone from being trigonal planar and the starting material achiral, right, because assuming R1 and R2 lack stereochemistry, the molecule has a plane of symmetry, it's the plane of the screen, to a chiral intermediate. The geometry of that central carbon is tetrahedral, and so, for example, the intermediate may have a structure where the oxygen atom is pointing up. That's one possible enantiomer, or it may have a structure where the hydrogen atom is pointing up, and this is the other possible enantiomer. In general, we'll see a racemic mixture of products, assuming that the two possible products are enantiomers and we don't have anything chiral built into the reducing agent or chiral catalyst, but the stereoselective reduction of carbonyl compounds is an important way to access chiral or stereogenic alcohols. And so I wanted to mention it here. This intermediate being anionic is not something we can easily isolate. And so what's done in workup generally is treatment with an acid, typically treatment with aqueous acid. This does two things. The first thing it does is protonate the alkoxide oxygen. The product is an alcohol. And here, because we started with a ketone, the product is a secondary alcohol. That proton transfer step doesn't change the stereochemistry. The configuration of the stereocenter is still the same because all we've done is add a proton to oxygen. This is one thing that the aqueous workup does. The other thing that aqueous workup does that you won't be able to see directly from the mechanism is that it separates the aluminum hydroxide salts, the byproduct, from the alcohol, which is what we really want. For example, the aluminum hydroxide salts are often insoluble in water, but the alcohol may be soluble in water due to the presence of the hydroxyl group and hydrogen bonding, right? And so we can get ROH in the aqueous phase and filter to remove the aluminum hydroxide salts. And that's an important step to isolate the alcohol. In any event, though, the big point of focus here is on the general mechanism that we're seeing. Nucleophilic addition, and this is a point that we've mentioned a number of times before, reduction, especially of carbon heteroatom pi bonds corresponds to addition, followed by a proton transfer step, which puts an electrophilic hydrogen atom from the acid on the oxygen atom. 